those are online. That handout is in the announcements and it went in two days ago. So it's a PDF link uh, that has this purple mass of housing units. Okay. So that you can use to um, lay things out. So we're starting with talking about civil um, engineering today, mainly because this is where we get our information for our property lines. So what you're seeing on the screen is called a plat map or a subdivision map. A plat, that's P-L-A-T. A plat is the same thing as a lot, and a lot is the same thing as a site plat. So the plot map has is basically a grouping of different individual lots, um, and it just you just kind of use them interchangeably. Most people have a pretty good idea what you're talking about. So this is actually from an engineer. The engineer is a great base and engineering group up in Ogden. Uh, this is their logo. Um, you know, it's all hand drawn. Um, so those things that you learn in, in your art class come back and pay out. What we're going to do is just spend a minute looking at this and get you an idea of what's going on here. So the first thing I want to look, you look at is this entire subdivision can be described with words and not pictures. And that is right here. Get that up there just to kind of zoom the way it was yesterday. Oh, well. So it's part of the southeast quarter of section four, township six, north, range one, west. When we um, set up a city, a cities are divided into um, 36 township. It's a 36 by 36 grid. Each township is approximately uh, uh, 36 square miles, okay? Um, then that gets broken down. So the best example of that for you guys here in Salt Lake is we have Salt Lake City, but it's surrounded by Mill Creek and Hunter and Granger and Taylorsville and, and all those townships. West Valley was never a township. Magna was, Hearns is. Um, West Valley became a city by incorporating all of those other townships. And they just kind of absorbed them like a boar you would do, okay? or a Roman. Okay, so we have, um, have all these townships. In those townships, those are divided up into grids as well. And they designate what, what area is education, which areas are gonna be for industry, which areas are retail, which areas are residential. That's all pre-designed before the town is even created. Okay. Now, all of this, if we look here, it tells us that this is an Ogden city. And it begins the corner lot seven uh, of that city, which um, is 1,443.92 uh, feet north uh, of the uh, bearing that's east. Okay? Now, that seems like a big number. And if you notice, the feet are in decimal. So in civil engineering, we do not use fractional inches you use decimal feet. So instead of thinking about there being 12 inches in a foot, we think of 10 division in a foot. So it's quasi phaco psychometric. It's not real metric, but it's a variation thereof. When you're working, you have to be able to make those conversions in your head rather quickly. And um, that can be kind of troublesome. We're gonna look at what that means more closely as we get moving here. As we go through this read, we're looking at the North, the North Star subdivision. Woo, yay, North Star people. But look at, once you says I go through here, count the number of times you see the word fence. So starting in this line, this one, this one, How did you get so far? Five? Did they get more than five fences? How many did you get? We got nine. Yeah. So the word fence means proceed. 
in every single description property, it has to be written this way. Even though it's old English, it has to be done this way. It's not legal if you change the words. Kind of one of those sad things. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that uh, those that decide to go into civil engineering, you have an entire class on writing descriptions. But we need to look at it from our point of view, what this all means. So all of this entire set of property ties back to right here. So this is Southwest corner of section four, township six, range one, SLB, US survey, and it's the found brass caps. So everything has to be tied to brass caps. Those brass caps are tied to monuments. And we do have a very important monument that's here local uh, that we can find. And I'll see if you guys recognize this one, maybe. If I can get past all the good old Zoom stuff. Maybe you've seen that monument. So this is on the, nor the northeast corner of Temple Square, downtown Salt Lake. This little marker, and this is why it's got such fancy pavers and all that stuff. That exact point at the very tip, that right there, every piece of property in Utah ties to that point. They're all connected to that point. Every city west of the Ohio River has a prime and base meridians that they use. And so if you look at Meridian, Idaho, it's called that because that's where the meridian is. That's where all of Idaho is based on. Um, so when we look at these, this is pretty important. And this has been stolen so many times. Okay. Um, fortunately, we can GPS identify them. Yay. But uh, this stone here is actually an, the old one. The new one's a little bit different. It gets replaced quite regularly. You get caught with that. That is that is like major federal. No, uh, you're not going to get out of court for a long time on that one. That's just don't don't take it. Um, I think there's actually a metal gate around it now to make it a little harder to pick the thing up. Um, so just yeah, don't steal. If you want one, make you one. We'll 3D print it and all those things. So everything's tied to this. And, and that's kind of what you need to know at this point. When we get into uh, commercial, we'll do a little more in depth with that with you guys next semester. Um, and how many of you know you'll be with me next semester now that we've screwed up your schedule so much? Okay. I'm, I'm trying to think about what a good project would be. And I had a good idea and I forgot to write it down. So that's bad. Um, is there a type of commercial building you guys would like to tackle? Is there some of you, because I can start working towards that. So uh, let me give you kind of an idea of what projects I have done and have access to. Um, the museum at Thanksgiving Point, the Dinosaur Museum, is one of my projects. That's trippy. Um, I've done some theaters. Um, the motion picture studio where uh, in Salt Lake where they filmed things like Touched by an Angel was filmed there. We did that studio. I've done every liquor store in the state, a few LDS churches, um, lots of uh, warehouses and office complexes, um, so, uh, tons of hotels, lots and lots of hotels. So what we'd want to do is we want to find something that's kind of fun and unique. And so I, because we want some energy because this year is just killing me. And so I'd like 2021 to be a, a little bit of a fun, fun project on there. So if you guys think of a project that'd be fun, I thought about maybe doing a nightclub, but that's kind of a little out of your experience range. Um, but we can maybe do some of that. So if you guys have an idea, uh, by all means, share it with me. If there's a project you'd really like to learn how to do, if that's your thing. Um, I've done schools. They're pretty boring, really. I mean, a school when you take all the stuff out of it, they're, they're pretty boring plans. But we can, we can do some funky stuff. Um, and I, I think that's kind of where I want to go with you guys. It's a little more of a challenge. Um, but anyway, just keep, keep me abreast if you have something like that. All right, so coming back to our engineering drawings. And the comments may be, why is everything purple? Um, 
It's what the engineer likes. Now, when I work in AutoCAD, my color scheme changes with the seasons. So this is my color scheme if I was doing it at Easter time because purple and yellow seems very Eastery. Uh, and I use a lot of reds and greens uh, at Christmas. Um, if it's spring, uh, lots of light greens. Um, you know, I, because I, you get bored. You really do get bored with doing things, even though I've never been bored on anything I've worked on. It's always been kind of exciting. So, um, but this company, um, just kind of getting an idea of what they're doing. Their text, all their text is a thin, and here's their layers. I'll just show you. Um, this is why I don't teach engineers. This is the names of their layers. They're very hard to make sense of. When I started, they were all numbers. They would just do like layer one. Okay, what does that mean? Um, and there's still engineers that just number them. Uh, so you usually have to go in and sort everything out to figure out what it is. Um, but that's, every time you get a drawing from an engineer, there's usually be more information there than what you need for your project. There will always be a north arrow. That is super, super important. And you, get to design your own north arrow. Um, that one is pretty intense north arrow on there. Howdy, howdy. You made it. So you need to download 2021 on there? Yeah. Is that what you've been using? Um, yeah, I'll send you, yeah, email me and I'll send you a letter because you'll be able to download it. Yeah. If yeah. not, yeah, we'll have to figure that out. I think she put the new stuff on. Okay. Yeah, they had to tell what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. yeah, there's what you can do. Yeah, we'll figure out something. I'll start thinking about that. Um, so you need the, to download um, from Autodesk. Oh, it's not gonna let you do that. So we gotta figure out how to get your file into an older version, right? Is that what happens? I think so. Are there, I don't know, but are there that or download a new program on this? Did they say we could do that? I. I asked her and she said that there wasn't a new version, but I like yeah. new version. Yeah, they didn't ask me. Okay, we'll see what we can look at. So yeah, um, yeah, I'll have to figure out how to do that. And from what I saw on this, it did have the I did actually have my phone on it. I just had to check in with you. Okay. So okay. Okay, take care. All right, yes, uh, Will, I did. I worked on the Dinosaur Museum down at Atrium Point back when I started. Those um, stucco dinosaurs on the outside are actually to scale. That is their actual size. Um, it was a lot cooler when there was all the other buildings around there because you could come over to Point of Mountain and see the T-Rex, and it was kind of like, whoa, that's a big animal. But it's, they're kind of getting covered up by trees now, so it's a little unfortunate that way. But yeah, the, the hardest part of that was, that was prior to 3D uh, architecture. And so that ramp that goes in there and wraps around that whole building had to be all done in 2D and mapped out. It was, that was a pretty, that was a challenge. It was fun. Okay, so we have our North Arrow. This next area here, this curve table, will look different from every engineer. Um, and what it refers to is this cul-de-sac over here. Each of these, this cul-de-sac, each curve is not given a radius, it's given a, a letter. And that letter, it refers back to the chart. Now there is one down here, radius of 50 feet, down here at the bottom. But if we look, none of these, how the E does. There's your foot foot base marker, but when we get out here to like A, it's a radius of 118 feet. It's just huge. And so what you would have to do is find the curve. Let's find A. And of course, why would it be right where I could find it easy? Uh, 
down there in the area. Figures. Not quite. This one? Yeah, by that house. Oh, yeah, there's A right there. Great. There's a radius there that doesn't even show on your drawing. How wonderful. It's actually for this arc right here that comes into it so you can tie it together. Um, when you look at these charts, and let's look at A because it's the one that's kind of fun. It's got this triangle. That is the delta of the um, arc. So if you were to plot out an arc using trig, that would be the angles uh, to make up that triangle. The next is the radius. Then you have the length. The length is like the circumference of the arc. Then you have the, oh man, I don't know what this one is. It's the same number, but I can't remember what the C stands for. No, it's, I'll have to look that up. I'm sorry, I, my brain just went, I'm trying to figure out how to help a girl install software she left on a laptop that belongs to the school that she doesn't have ministry rights to. I don't know how to help her. Pick up along, gotta shoot you. Okay, and then it gives us the bearing. Okay, I remember what it is now. I looked at him, I remembered. Length of the cord, length of the cord. Huh. Takes a minute. Okay, what is a cord? Ooh, a little wavy line. What else, anybody got any ideas? Coordinate. Let me remember from your high school guitar. There it is. Anybody play guitar? Oh my gosh, this is like the second time ever that no one's played. Yeah, that's true. There's only six people. Maybe someone online plays. Who knows? All right, here's a guitar. In case you don't want what it looks like. Um, this does not apply to um, bow instruments like the bass and the violin because they're a little bit different in their nature. It does apply to things like guitars, the guitars. You know what you this is a Western guitar. Um, it is a six string. If you look at that, you'll notice that there is not a string that goes to the center of the sound hole. The sound hole is that big open circle. And it's always a circle, always, um, unless you go into some of the um, ethnic type, uh, like African or South American guitars are a little different nature. Um, why do I not have a string going through the diameter? What's that? It does make a sound that will make you cry. Oh. You ever stepped on a cat's tail? Do that, but play it backwards on their record player. That's about what it sounds like. So what happens is when that string vibrates in the middle of the soundboard, half of it's positive, half of it's negative, and it cancels itself out. And so you get this weird noise out of it. So all of the string on the guitar are used to play a chord, and the line that goes through a circle that is not the center point is a chord. So that's the connection between the math and the music in there. And we'll um, get your machine, get your guitar fixed so you can play the dang thing. But the strings are cheap. They're just cat gum. No, they're not. They're still out. Um, we use metal. Okay, but that's a chord. Okay, and that's the distance from point A to point B. I gotta stop trying to be funny because no one laughs anymore. <laughs> So bad. Okay, now what else we need to look at here? Um, you will see that these little markers here are monument points. If you go to your home and walk around, you'll probably find a brass nail somewhere in your concrete line or maybe in your curving gutter that marks your property. Um, they, they're sometimes hard to find, but they are there. And, and they're usually brass because it doesn't corrode and, and go away. So let's take a look now at what's going on here. Um, we're going to limit you down just a little bit <clears throat> to your property. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to go with, we're looking at lots 82 and 83 right now. So I'm going to zoom up on those. And this is going to be the kind of big deal. We have to do what are called uh, bearings on these. And a bearing is um, based off of north and south. So if you have your bearing line, you usually have a line that comes down. The top will be north, bottom south. 
Then you have a diagonal line. East is always over here. Oh, that looks so bad. West is here. When we're doing a bearing, like we have here, uh, the property line, this big yellow line is the full parcel, the full subdivision. It says that it's south, 89 degrees, 47 minutes, 33 seconds east. Okay. So what that means is we start at the center. We're going south of east. So we go here and we're going to swing down 89 degrees from the east point. So that puts our line basically right down in here. Not quite 90, but at that angle. So we go to the last, block, at last orient and then swing from that. So your numbers will always be less than 90, always. If you ever see one that's more, they don't know what they're doing, okay? So they're always less than 90. Um, when we look at this, we have north and east, we have south and east, south and west. So this little line right here, you can see that little pencil, has the bearing and the distance of 12.57 feet. Okay, this bearing is the same bearing for this property line and this one and this one. They're all parallel to each other. Okay. Now, the, this class, I'm going to give the choice. I didn't give the other class the choice. You can either do lot 82 or lot 83. If you've got a wide house, some of you like um, Wesley, you're not in the, there's not a lot on this plot that will fit your house. That you're doing and Michael yours is probably the same thing you guys have these big big houses you guys went crazy you're going to have to combine the two together okay you know for those who work okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take and put this onto our house and so we know where the property edges go and we can position the house where it fits um, it's going to be um, a little bit of work I'm gonna make you redo something um, for ease. We did all that work on the topography. I'm gonna to have you take that off. And you're going, oh man, um, which means we have to redo the pad and the dirt out of the, the but it'll make it easier for what we're gonna do. Um, so just kind of bear with a little bit. So when I, when I get up, I always print off because looking at a screen is tricky to do. But when I work on a site plan, I'll print off the sheet. This is what's in the announcements. And I will take and use, and I give it away. I use a highlighter and I keep track of where I'm at because when I'm working, I get interrupted a lot. And you guys are just seeing how that works. Someone just shows up and they want all your attention and you forget where you're at. You gotta, oh, now I remember. Um, so I, I keep mark of it. Um, you, if you're good, you, you should be fine as we do this. Um, but I will end up combining for the, so. See, now I'm second guessing myself. Again. Just talk and don't think. It's a lot easier. Uh, so we're going to put these together. Now, there's a couple things about this that we need to look at. So I'm going to turn off this tool. And, uh, a minute. You know, when this is all over, I'm going to go tech free for six months and not pick up one piece of technology. And I'm not going to do a single Zoom or video or Instagram or anything with video for six months. I got to purge my system. Okay. I'm going to zoom up on these just a little bit. We're going to talk about what, what we're looking at. This bearing applies to the yellow line all the way around. And so it'll change or change its angle. If I look at lot 82, lot 82 tells me that it's 7,771 square feet. SF means square feet. Okay. Now, how, how big is an acre? How big is an acre? You're going, why would I even care? That's a stupid question. No one memorizes the size of an acre. That's stupid. Okay, the size of an acre is 43,560 square feet. 
it's not really tricky to, I'm gonna bring this stupid thing back again. Oh, nice. It's not hard to remember if you think about it being a four and a three and a five and a six and a zero. That's really three, four, five, six, oh, zero. And you just put the first two, you can remember how many square feet are in an acre. It's a lot easier than how many feet are in a mile. Okay, so you just three, four, five, six, oh, then you got it. Just put the first two. Okay, now, if that's a full acre, how much is this if it's only 7,771? Out of six. Okay, how can you find that out exact with what you know in life? Divide, no, divide doesn't quite work. We pull up the big controller of all things in the United States, Google. And again, man, I gotta erase this again. I am so happy. Okay, so. so if I was to take in, and I'm gonna try and squinch 7771, if I put in 7771, square feet and I put the equal sign right in the command line and type in acre and hit enter. Oh did you guys know you could do that with Google? It, you, you need to know because it makes your online crap work a lot faster. Especially the busy stuff that math teachers are trying to come up with to keep you busy. I'm trying to make it easier on you and they're making it more difficult. Right? So an eighth of an acre would be 0.125. This is slightly larger, so we're looking at about three sixteenths of an acre is all these lots are. How much do you think they cost? Yep. Look at Salt Lake. So we're going to do a little. Where is my realtor.com? And I want to look for just an empty lot. Well, this kind of gives you an idea. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty good price. That's a, but not buildable. So we look at here. This is Immigration Road. Um, that's a, a five acre plus 185,000. That's, but it's going to cost you four times that to make anything built there, which is crazy. Um, here's one more realistic, okay? This is Bullion Street, it's downtown Salt Lake. Um, it's actually on the kind of west side of West Temple. Um, it's a, a three eighths of an acre. It's $300,000 and it's in a bad neighborhood. Now, the reason I'm looking at these um, lots, here's another one, this is Bengal Boulevard. Um, it's about the same size lot as what we're working with here, $200,000. Now, when I was your age, I, you could buy a brand new home for a starter home for 85,000 that included the land. So this should be a little bit of a concern for you in like, how am I ever gonna buy a freaking house, right? Um, hopefully that's the reason why we get educated so we can afford to buy things like this but property has not gone down at all and it never will. Once property goes up, it does not come down. It's not like your car that depreciates, land never loses value. So that only thing that will cause property to change value is a little on depression. And our country has a fear of depressions. So they put us into long-term recessions, which should have been depressions. The reason you want economically and your, your parents will argue with this, but a country's economy needs to go through a depression for a price reset. Uh, we should have one in 72, 86, 96, and 2003. We're all supposed to be depressions that we artificially held off, which has kept our prices high. Um, we will end up going through one. It'll be in your lifetime and it will be hellacious because no one will know how to cope with it. Just know that's coming, okay? Nothing you can do about it. It's just live your life. It's kind of like, oh, don't know who's present. Doesn't matter. It's not my backyard, so I don't care, okay? Um, but you do have a problem with buying a house. 
if you go to rent, what do you think it costs to rent an apartment right now in Salt Lake County? And you got family that's renting right now, don't you? You have family that rents right now? You have a friend that's renting. How the freak is he affording that? How old is he? How old is he? He's, he can, oh. So all, everything he makes is going into rent. Okay, my, my mortgage on my house is 1100 So how, is that a two bedroom apartment he has? It's a one. Oh, so we're kind of, apartment rates do change and right now there's a shortage. So they are top dollar right now. It's cheaper to buy than to rent for the first time in my lifetime. Um, that's scary. Yeah, why is he renting? Oh, don't tick your parents off until you got a good career going. Then, then tick them off. Oh man, that's brutal. Um, how do you find roommates? <sighs> wow, I, I feel for him. My son, he's renting a one bedroom and, and I'm going, buy a house, it's cheaper. But, you, but he doesn't listen to me, so that's fine. Okay, so now we have things in perspective. What we have to do as designers in the future is get the cost of housing down cheaper. There are some things coming, and we'll talk about those in another point of how to build cheaper on this expensive land so we can afford it. Okay, now we look here also as we look at this size, this little tiny piece of property. The size here is 100 feet long in this direction. 77.71 feet in this direction. The red line on here is a public utility easement. We call that a PUE. It goes around, in some cases, two sides of the property, in this case, three sides. That is where your utilities are buried. So your phone, your cable, your gas, your water, your sewer, it's in there somewhere. You cannot put anything permanent in this area. You can put fences, you can put driveways, um, you can put a shed, you can put a swing set, but you cannot put anything that has a foundation. It cannot be in this zone, okay? Um, that's why you call blue stakes. Super important, call blue stakes. Um, every year, there's always at least one incident that you can see in the news where um, someone takes a backhoe, shoves it down the ground, they hit a gas line, it sparks, and they blow up their house. They're, they're, kind of funny in a way, but they're also really sad. Uh, in 1998, no, 94, um, I was going to school downtown Salt Lake and they were doing some models up in the avenues area. And those homes are like 5 million each, just, even though they're like teeny tiny little blah things. They hit it and they blew the whole thing up, but the old lady who lived there was still inside. So sometimes it's sad. It's kind of funny now. I'm kind of weird that way. She's knitting a boom. It's like some out of the Hollywood movies. Anyway, I didn't know her so cool kids. She'll probably haunt me now. Anyway, okay, so we have that. We have also this north and east. The north is the same for this entire row, 100, uh, 1390 north. And then each of these 906, 912, 918. What the freak happened to 908 and 910? Oh, you think? Yeah, where? Yeah, no, because that would be not. This is the biggest problem with these numbers, these 906, and that all comes to the US Postal Service. They are the only ones in the entire United States authorized to grant an address. And they screw up all the time. So you'll see this, you go looking for someone's address and you think you know it and it's like, there's no 908. Well, yeah, because we went from six to 12. So that's, and you can't change that. There's nothing you can do to change that. That is a done deal. So we just live with it. And here's another one. We'll go from 18 to 26. Don't, no reason why. And, and you call and ask them, uh, it's just how it worked out. Okay, thanks. They do try and get odds on one side, evens on another. But again, it doesn't make sense. So don't try. It'll drive you nuts. Just take what they give you and go on with it. 
Um, we also have, what else here? That's probably enough. We do have another thing we have to worry about, and that's called setbacks. And those are given by the county or the city in which you live. And that's how close your building can be to the property line. So we've got a lot to set up here in the next 45 minutes or so. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what you said. One increase in the coordinate a meter more away. I'm not sure what you're referring to, Thrasher. One meter. Is it one increase? Thrasher, we put your mic on and explain what you chatted. That would make sense. No one's ever explained that. So what Thresh is saying is from nine to 18 is six meters. So they're based by meters. Could be. Um, I've never known the postal service to work in metric, but it's as good as a reason for me. I, I'll go with it. Like I say, no one's ever, ever said a word to me about how they come up with it. Maybe they want to worry about how the guy's walking, even though none of them walk anymore. So I don't know. Is your dad in the postal service? Your dad? So that, that makes sense to me. It's six, it's a division six. So I'll go with it. I like it. Thanks. Here we go. Now, this is not the house I've been doing, but this is the one that's most like yours, with the exception of Wesley and Michael, the back who have gigantic homes. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is when we um, were in here last, we put on our topo surface, this pretty green stuff, um, which is fine. It's good. Um, you're going to end up sliding it a little bit uh, as we do today's stuff. So this is if you can choose to delete it and put it back on, or you can um, just kind of work around it. Um, I'm going to leave this one on because that's most like what most will do going with the lazy student side of things. Um, because, you know, you're American and who wants to do more work? We have to, um, to get you there. So make sure you're in the, let's go to the first floor of your property to begin with. <clears throat> and again, this one is nowhere near done, but it, it matches the size of kind of what you guys are doing. Now, once you get yourself oriented here, and I'm, I am doing a lot of lag stuff to get you guys all caught up and in the same page and all that stuff. Um, what we want to do now is go to your site plan. Super important. So now I have to go find your site plan. And you'll notice when you get here that there are no elevation views. So we have to do this next step in the site plan. And hopefully this is where your topo surface might get in the road, depending on where it's set at. If you did everything like we did um, last time, you'll be fine, but a few of you may have some issues, okay? All right, now we're gonna put in our property and I'm gonna start with, um, um, well, golly gee, Willikers, man. Um, you can edit these to either as you go. When, when I'm, I'm going to do lot 82. If you want lot 83, you just have to change some numbers. And that should become evident as we're going how to do that. Questions? Because that seems confusing in my head. I, I'm assuming a lot, and I know. Let's go now to massing and site. Our good old friend here. Now that we've got topo down, you've got a lot more options in here. Um, it's a lot. Be careful just playing in this because you can literally make it a sucking void and it's kind of cool. You can also make Mount Everest um, not so cool. It is, but your memory sucks out really fast and um, you end up with um, a crash file. Okay. We're gonna go over here to property line. Clear over crosses right underneath the word modify. Now, property lines are not tangible, but they are the most legal nightmarish things in the world. Um, 
most lawsuits in our country, believe it or not, are over property lines. They're not over murder. They're not over theft. They're not over divorce. Divorce is number two. Um, they're over property lines. So that's a little, little crazy. Um, and it's mainly because we're getting better at what we do. The, the civil engineers now use military grade GPS, which can get you to three centimeters of accuracy now, which is really good. But 20 years ago, we could get to three feet of accuracy. So stuff that was done three years ago might be off by three feet. That's a sidewalk. And, and that's, that's a lot of property. So there, that's usually when you start seeing the lawsuits. It's, hey, that guy's been using my three feet of tomato ground for a long time. I want it back. That's what's going okay. So go ahead and click on that. And you're going to get a pop-up window that comes up. And you really want to make sure you're walking through this the first time because doing this alone is a little confusing. So uh, I feel for those who are not with us today, may they rest in peace as we leave them there. No, I'll bell them out, but are your teachers getting tired in school? Feels like every teacher I talk to is just exhausted. I, I usually don't. I, I, I'm up at four, I'm usually here till after six, and this is the first year in 20 years that I felt tired at work. So we'll get through it. All right, we have two options. We can create by entering distances and bearings, which is good because that's what the engineer gave us, or we could just make it up and sketch it. Don't ever make it up and sketch it unless it's a, um, a project that has no property. So by that I mean as designers, you guys can literally start building plans of your own design, but you don't know what's going to be built yet. So you make up a site plan. So you have some place to call dirt and, um, and go with it. And, and you guys will be there. You guys can start getting to where you can do house plans for money. And that's a good thing, okay? Because you can pay, for, that's how I pay for my college. It's done really well. Okay, we're gonna do by entering distances and bearings. Hey, a chart, woohoo. Now, here's the big kicker in the teeth. We need to know where to start. So I'm gonna come back here so you can see it. Um, right down in this corner, and it doesn't show on the handout, I'm sorry. I can only fit so much up so it's big enough to see. This right here is the POB, point of beginning, right there. Clear down here, at lot 75, that little corner. And that goes for the yellow outline that goes around the whole thing. Cool. Then all of these little lots inside are done to meet needs. One, we have to make sure we got a wide enough road. That road is 60 feet wide. That is not the road. That is the distance from property line to property line. In between here is your planter strip, your sidewalk, your curb, your gutter. We've got to do all that still. That's not the civil engineer's job, that's ours. So this road's got to be wide enough for all of that. This cul-de-sac has to be large enough that a fire truck can get in there and get out. Kind of important, because if the fire truck can't get to you, I hope the little doggy is okay. Because otherwise it's a hot dog. Okay, so here we go, number one. So for us, oh, I was gonna show you that, dang it. For us to start, we're gonna start in lot 82, right here in the bottom left corner. And we're gonna look at the bearings. The bearings are right here southwest. This is our bearing. So we're gonna put that in and hopefully, that is gonna go weird. We're gonna have to start here at the top. So this, what I'm doing is we draw these, we want to draw them counterclockwise, or sorry, clockwise, clockwise. So we want to start here, go over to here, come down to here, back across the post. It's really important that you say, okay, south of east. Why, that is a weird number. That's just weird. Oh, they, they swung this other way around. Okay, they did, they swung this counterclockwise, cool more power to us. Starting right here, our distance, we're going to put in 77.71. You do not need to put in feet. You do not need to put in inches. You just need to type in the dang number. Cool. And as soon as we jump over to where north and south are, oh, look, it converted over for us. Yay, computer programmers. May they make all the money they make, and, and too bad they're not making as much as they were. 
So we're there. Now notice we're dealing with 256 of an inch. That's how accurate these things are now. That is insane, okay? Now this first S, this would be an S because we look at the bearing. It's south, 89 degrees, 47 minutes, 33 seconds east. Can you find that on your handout? Okay, I got a head nodding. That makes me happy. I mean, the student's engaged. That's good. That's like a teacher's miss. So I'm going to change this to south. You only get two choices, north or south. Then the bearing, we're going to change that to match what's given, 89 for the, mid, the degrees. Then next is our minutes, that's 47. And then our seconds. Why the freak am I putting time into a measurement of the angle? It's not time. Why are we call it minutes and seconds? Have you ever pondered that? Okay, here's the best I've been able to find up uh, in researching. When we were starting out to explore this great big blue ball of ours and going by ocean or by caravan, we had to kind of know how to get home because it doesn't do any good to go buy spices and not get home, asked Christopher. Columbus. He didn't even find the spices. Um, he didn't even find gold. But he made a home because of one little poorly paid intern that his job, or her, well, it was his job, was to turn the hourglass every time the last sand fell out. And that means he had to turn it as soon as the sand ran out. That was their job. And that was figured an hour's time. Now, okay, hourglasses weren't manufactured in a quality control situation. So there was a lot of misguided time keepers. Okay? Then if you look at portions of the glass being empty, which is where that comes from, is the glass half full, half empty, has nothing to do with being a positive person. It's if you can get home or not. I had to do it. No, it actually came from hourglasses. How, where's your hourglass? It's converted to positive thinking now, but that's okay. Um, so if you want to know how far you're going, you also need to cut down by minutes and seconds. And that's where that comes. The measure of the sand is how, and that's how we plot a course to navigate it. That's why if you look at the map in longitude latitude, it's exactly 360, like the Earth's a perfect circle. Um, it's not, but we think of it as that, and we divide it into time and travel. And that's where our time zones come in. That's the best you can come up with or out of what I've been able to find. There's probably a better reason for that, but that's all I've got. Now, is this an east or a west bearing? East, cool, we've got that in there. Then what's a type is a line. The other option there is a curve or an arc. If you're doing the cul-de-sac, these would be arcs and you will have to um, convert them to the lengths, the radius and all that kind of stuff. Uh, will, that is a yes on your question there. Okay, now that's our first one that goes across the top of our property when you drop down the side. So we want to insert a line, line two. This one has a length of 100. Woohoo! Everybody wins. And it's going to be a north, so that's good. And then the bearing is going to be zero degrees, 12 minutes, 27 seconds. Now, this, if these are all parallel properties, we should start seeing a pattern emerge. And this one is going east, still aligned. Insert number three. So I'm going to come here. Um, that one's going to be, um, oh, wow, 77.71. Cool. Uh, this is going to be north. And how do I know it's north? So on your handout, you got to look in the middle of the road, and that's where the bearings found. Okay, so it's a little, you get used to looking at things being parallel. We want to put as little text on a drawing as we can, and that's kind of the rule there. So let's be north. Oh, look, 89 degrees. Oh, 47 minutes. 33 seconds. How, how convenient. And notice I just highlight and type over rather than type it all out. You could. 
Um, is this going east or west? West. Okay, so now let's look at our pattern emerging. Line one and line three are the same, except they're opposites. South, north, east, west. Okay. You want to watch for that on your properties. You want things that make sense like that. The hardest property I ever did had 13 sides to it. It was down in Alpine, Utah. It was a piece of property that everybody else built the easy lots around it. And it was the last lot left. And it was it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare to get this all right. Um, it was uh, 1.5 acres. A lot of scrub oak in there. It really wasn't a good place to build. But it was the only lot left. And so, yeah, it's kind of crazy. All right, line four. Whoops, I might need to move that down. Is that is there? Um, so line four. Guess what the length's gonna be? One hundred. Guess what the bearings gonna be? So, so I didn't have to look at the paper anymore. I just know I'm gonna be dealing with opposite. This one's gonna be south. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, I've got too many screens. Someone's trying to log on my computer. Um, the bearing is going to be zero degrees, 20, 12 minutes, 27 seconds. This can tell I'm dyslexic. I got a PhD as being dyslexic, and no one ever told me I was. And I need another west. So you should have two east and two west. Now, when you do a property line correctly, auto, uh, Revit is going to check the work for you. And I can look here in the bottom corner. And it should say closed. That means the start point and the end point meet. Now, the law will allow that to have a gap of up to three feet. You don't want that on your drawings. Okay. You want to make sure these close. Um, that means you got to check your work, do it twice, whatever it takes. You don't want to ever show a gap on a drawing. Why would they allow that? Um, because there's errors. So when Utah was, was measured, for the property lines, it was done with what are called chains and rods. And literally they drug a chain across the ground and then they flip the chain over. So they two people, one draw, did this leapfrog approach, which is fine, um, except Northern Utah is cold and Southern Utah is hot. What happens to steel chain and the heat? Expands. What happens in the cold? So only the middle of the state is measured correctly, which is why when you go to four corners, it's off by three miles. That that monument, everybody goes says, "Hey, I'm in four states at once." Yeah, you're you're three miles away from that actually happens. We will never change the boundaries, though. We'll just we'll just legally adopt to them uh, because to change state boundaries would be really bad. And if you ever get a chance, if you're really into the history of it, there is a, a History Channel series on. Um, the, sh the shape of the states, it's pretty interesting um, how it was all came about. So, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of errors in state boundaries, but we just accept it and legally adapt it because it's too, too much at stake, meaning water rights and mineral rights and all that. It, it'd be a nightmare. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit OK now. And there's your property. Woo, yay. It's all one thing. So we've got to place this, um, kind of go over your building a little bit. And now again, you guys in the back, yours is not going to fit, right? Okay, so let's tell you how to fix yours real quick here. So let's just pop it down. Your depth, 100 feet, you should be fine in, in this direction. It's the width, correct? Okay, so if you guys are just hang tight, um, let me get those two fixed before I do the next step. When you get that placed, um, Wesley and Michael, jump up here, it says edit table. And we're gonna combine it to lot 83. So when you click on this, what you've got to change is the, the 77.71. Are you okay, man? Uh, you fool. Is that why you look like a freaking tomato back there? Okay, well. Uh, it's at a table up at the top after you will select it. Children. And what you're going to do is we're going to double this distance. That'll take you into 83. So instead of 
77.71, you two are going to use 155.42, and that'll make your lot wider. Because I think that's the only issue I've seen with your plans, the width. So that'd be, I'll, I'll do it, 155.42. And this works anytime you're working property. Is it possible for an owner to buy two lots? Absolutely. Um, some people don't want to be five feet away from their neighbors. They want to be further because they've had enough. So all that, that, that'll just maximize your site, okay? And you can edit that um, to do that. It makes sense for you too. Now you gotta reboot everything back there. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this right now. Okay, so that gets our property line. And notice the line type is a long dash and then two short dashes. So that's, that's the symbol that's used for property. The next thing we wanna put in here is the PUE. Now that's a public utility easement that we want to put in. We need to know what that is because we don't want our house there. We cannot do an offset with this. This will not offset. It is a set element. It's a family of its own. And so we have to get creative with it, which is great. I mean, I always like getting creative, but I don't. Um, so what we're going to do in terms of how I did this, huh? Uh, I didn't even yeah. okay. We're going to go into the architectural tab. We're going to use our model lines. Now, remember, model lines do not print ever, so we'll have to convert them, but that's okay. So we click on model line, and I'm going to go from the bottom, and I'm just going to draw a line straight up. Don't worry about tracing it. You can't. You cannot trace onto just go straight up go further than the property. So that line is up above so you can see it. Give you a minute. You back in there, Wes? Still working on it? Okay, I'll talk slower. So you, no, that's driving nuts. Okay, now, how do we get that so it matches my property? We can use the line tool. Yeah, I remember that. Remember, I used to use this all the time. Select the property line and then the model line, and now they match. Whoa, that's so slick. That was easy, man. Why didn't we do that before? I don't know. No one listens. Okay, do the same thing for the top and the bottom line. Uh, we don't have any PUEs on this property line in between, which is good. So, again, back to the architecture, model line. Grab an endpoint, go straight. Let's say that, now it's cringe. Then align, select the property line, and then the model line. Oops, due diligence there, man. And so they line up, make sure they're longer than what your property's on, so you can see them. And then one more. And it doesn't matter which end you start with. They just need to line up when you're done. So property line, model line, and that's what. Now we have something we can offset, which is gonna be really important. Okay, so our first thing to put in there that we're gonna start with is our PUE. It's 10 feet um, that goes around. There are lots of examples. Have any been up to uh, Red Butte Gardens? Have you noticed the big giant pipe that runs through the middle of that thing? Where the ponds are? Uh huh. Yeah, kind of. That is a Chevron oil pipe. It comes from Alaska. It's leaked a few times. That is a PUE. That property was designated residential. There's not a person alive that's going to live with an oil pipe in the back of their yard. They're just not. That's why it became a garden. And now you have to pay to go to it. Now, we're just going to do an offset of 10 feet. We're going to take our little green line extensions out and move them into the property line. So each one comes in. And we're just going to do one set of these at a time because it gets, it gets a little crazy. It gets a little crazy. 
Then have we got that? Okay, now we're gonna do some cleanup. I'm gonna use my corner tool. I'm just gonna close these corners just so it, it looks nicer. Okay. And we're gonna change these lines. We're gonna modify, select one of the three, doesn't matter which one. And then up at the top, you're gonna to see line styles and the word lines. Hit the down arrow and change this one to, this is gonna be a center line. So we make, choose a center line. And that's gonna be a short dash, short dash. Okay, short dash, short dash. So now it's different from the one above, or this guy, they're different. Now you can do the same thing for the other two, or you can use your match properties. Select the one you've changed and then set the other two so they match. Makes it easy breezy, nice and easy. Some about Corel or CoverGirl or something like that. Okay, so this is our PUE. That's where your utilities are. So we're water, electric, gas, sewer. You know that's kind of weird to think about that your sewer is in the same hole or trench that your drinking water and your electricity is in. You know what else can blow up? Sewer lines. You know what you don't want in your water? Sewage. So when there's an earthquake, what is the first thing you do? You check and shut off your water supply. You shut your water supply off, then get your electrical shut off. Okay? Um, because more likely, the first thing that's gonna rupture is gonna be the sewer lines, followed by a water line, then the gas line. Gas line's a little more flexible than the other two, so then they'll hold out a little bit longer, but you definitely do not want raw sewage into your drinking water, because that's your entire water heater and all the water in the back of your toilets. You know, that's all drinkable, unless you put those Clorox chemicals in them. Yeah, that's water storage. You know, so. Yay! And it's cold, always. Can you redo the part where you were offsetting those lines? I couldn't hear anything you were saying while you were doing that. Okay, so I traced the line and I lined it. Did you get that part? Yeah, I got the tracing. Then I just went to offset 10 feet and popped them inside. Okay. That's all. Okay. So that, now we've got to worry about setbacks. Setbacks are done by the city or county. So most of you live in cities, unless you're from Kearns and you guys are all at home. Kearns is not a city. Kearns is a township. It will never be a city. It's not large enough. It uh, doesn't have enough tax base to self-function. So it is a ward of the county. Um, think places like Granger, Hunter, those were townships that got pulled into uh, West Valley. And so they're part of West Valley City now. But um, townships have been around a long time. They, they have their value, they're good things, but they sometimes can be a little more run down because they don't have a dedicated tax flow. And so if you're getting into city planning, which is another really good career to go into, knowing when to encourage a township to become part of a city or to self-incorporate is an important function. Kearns had the option and they delayed. And so now West Valley horseshoes around Kearns and then they're flanked by West Jordan and South Jordan. There's this little island out there and they have really no room to grow and no one else wants them now, which is kind of a sad state for the political side, but um, that is a city planner's job is to make sure everything's being run and managed well. It's kind of an exciting job. That is not a job you'll have for your whole life. You usually change cities on average of every five to 10 years. So you're always moving because we want fresh ideas in those jobs to stick around. So if you like to move a lot, that's a really good career. It is a six figure income and it only requires a bachelor's degree, which is even better, okay? Okay. What type of line are the ones that you had me offset? The green model lines, we changed them into the center lines. Okay. Okay, so here are your setbacks that we're gonna use. Um, and these are pretty typical. They do change with each jurisdiction. 
but you can look it up. So typically on the side yards, you want the total of the two side yards to equal or be greater than 20 feet. Now that means you have room for you to shift the house and the property. So if to say my client wants to have a place to park the boat, I need to shift the building over. So I might have five feet on one side and 15 feet on the other. So there's a place to park the boat. I can't go any more than 10 here. So on our side yard, um, if we do 10 and 10, that's 20. In this case, the PUE on the left satisfies the step back requirement. I just need one on the right. So we're gonna do another um, model line, architecture model line. We can put that fourth one in now, just like before. And we now align it with the property line so it's a parallel situation. And then we're gonna offset that 10 feet. Okay, so we're gonna go offset 10 feet and that one comes in. We're doing this one separate because I want this to be a different line type. So we're not gonna trim it. Well, we are gonna trim it, but wait a minute. We're gonna change that line to a hidden line. So it's just lots of little dashes. Okay, that again, no, we can't build beyond it, but my roof can go up to that. And again, I've exaggerated the site just a little bit. Um, I do not need to overlap, never overlap lines, ever, never, never, because if I put this on top of this, that's gonna be a solid line, and then it's the wrong information. We're gonna do your front step back next, so the front's off this street, this is um, 1375 North. So please don't lose your handouts. Um, if you do, it's in the announcement, you just have to find it. The front yard in most cities in Utah is 25 feet. Um, that is under review right now for next year's legislative session uh, about making these front yards smaller, mainly for water conservation, for new subdivisions. Grass is the biggest user of water in our entire state. Uh, grass takes a lot of water. You can buy water resist, uh, water or drought tolerant grass that can be watered less often, but most of the water in our state is used for gr gr grass. Growing, growing, oh, glowing glass, that's grass. Yeah, that's great. Let's get some glass shards out there, make them glow and walk on it. That's just, um, we want our grass to be pretty and green. Uh, you will see in your neighborhoods more and more people rip their, their grass out and put in things like gravel, um, desert plants, things along those lines, because water is not gonna get cheaper. Um, there are ways you can keep your green lawn and do that if you fertilize it correctly and if you buy the, buy the correct type. The Kentucky bluegrass is not the correct type. That is for Kentucky where the humidity is 90% and they don't have sprinkler systems. Uh, so um, let's see. Um, so what would, whoa, whoa. Okay. So we're gonna do another offset we're gonna set it to 25 feet. Now for some of you, things will get really tight here really quick. I'm gonna take that first green line down the bottom and I'm gonna upset that in as well. So now I've got another green line coming in. Cool beans, 25 feet. And my line type's gonna change correctly. Then we gotta do the backyard. The backyards tend to be 30 feet. Now this is where we're gonna start running into some issues for probably most of you. So if I go and do my offset now at 30, and I've seen some backyards that are 45 feet. Most people aren't spending any time in their backyards anymore. Um, we need green space, we go to the mountains. We need green space, we go to the park. Um, but we saw this, these laws that, um, wow, that's really deep. That year generation needs to think about getting changed. Um, do we need that much grass to mow? Do we really, really want to do that? I mean, um, I'm at the point now, my kids all moved out, I've got to mow. I'm looking at 30 years of mowing lawn. Um, no, I don't think I want to do that anymore. I'm fine ripping the stuff out. What's that? Um, yeah, but 
that I don't have to mow. But I want that tall. That can just do its own thing. Yeah, the 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 little stuff we walk on, I could care less about that. Okay, so now if you look at your house, this house definitely will not fit this lot right now. I haven't changed this line yet. Um, and then look at these. Little. So if need be, and you look at this, uh, the front yard it it need twenty feet there. You just have to. Um, and the reason for that is if someone comes zipping down this road and they're drunk and they pop the curb, you want hopefully some distance there that that soft turf will slow that car down. Um, in most cases it does, and so you don't lose the whole house. Um, but in my neighborhood, I've seen a lot of cars run into houses lately. I, I think people are just drinking more at home. Um, uh, the other thing about trees, there's trees along our sidewalks, not because it makes the place pretty, it does, but it's to keep people when they get off the road because of an uh, impairment or whatever, they hit the tree before your house. The tree can grow back. Your house is a little bit more expensive. Um, and if you want to look at some massive trees, drive Main Street, Brigham City someday. Those suckers are 182 years old this year. And they're still going strong, but you cannot see to turn left on that road for anything. So um, get a trip. That's it. So if you need be on this backyard, you can do this, and you have to make that choice yourself. Um, you can do an offset of 15 feet. Sorry, don't mean to chime on you. If I do 15 feet coming back, that will suffice for an inner city type lot, okay? So if you need to do 15, so your options then for the backyard can be 15, 20, 25, or 30. Do not exceed 30. Um, I would recommend you keep them in five foot increments, just easier, yeah. How do you move the whole house? We don't move the house. Uh, do, so let me finish the lines, I'm gonna get this fixed. Okay, so once you decide where you want that, I'm gonna get rid of that line, it's not confusing you. So this is a 15 footer, um, and it's a type to here. And I just let that run across on these lines, and I change the lines types. Um, I, I use this one here. I need to use the one, the brackets, so it's a, a line and not a hidden line, and that will make it black. If it's green, that's not going to print. So you want to make sure you select the one that's in the brackets. Okay, I forgot to tell you that because I didn't do it. Okay, so now they're hidden. Now they're all black. And this one's got to change here. So get those all set so they're in conformity. So my house has to be in that range. I would like the house to be as close to front as possible. And the reason for that is I can, don't have to have as long of a driveway. Concrete's expensive, and I don't want to pull more than I have to. So it was asked. How do I move the house? Don't, don't ever move your house because you could leave the kitchen sink behind or you could leave the basement foundations behind. You don't ever want to move your house. So we do a move of the property. Before I do that, I'm gonna get rid of these green lines because it's less I have to worry about. And I've got enough on my mind without worrying about green lines. So I just take those out now, they've done their job. And I'm gonna go and do a move this big old coordinate system move. And you want to have your control key pressed down. You have to select each line with the control key pressed. That lets you select multiple items. Fortunately, your outside property line is one item. So you can just grab a hold of that. Then when you're done selecting lines, you right click and hit finish selection. And I'm going to zoom up here and then take my cursor and I'm gonna run along my step back line, line it up with the house. I have to do this in two steps to get it exactly where I want it. So I grab that point there and I move it up to the house. Now my, my house is right on that step back. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna go back to move. And it then do the same thing. Now if everything's still selected blue, and so I can just kind of line up here on this corner and slide that over. Uh, it wasn't all selected. Teacher lied. Teacher's going blind. Move, control key, select, 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 select. 
select, 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 select. Okay, I'm doing all again. Right click, finish, come back down, line up, slide over, boom, we're good to go. Okay, so now I'm in my parameters for my property. So we're kind of making progress. Okay, we get that okay. I know it's a little, little tricky, but we want to have as little driveway as possible in there as we go. Okay, now the fun part. Okay, just about thought we were in our time. Different times. Any questions on what we just did? They lost, confused. Yes. That's okay. As long as you aren't over the line, is that are you over down no, below? I mean over, like yeah, you, you can't have your garage over. Your garage should I so I can screw into my own backyard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you can't have any of your building over this front setback. Okay. okay. Um, but what'll happen is, and I've seen this happen where um, a foundation crew messed up, they put the basement in the wrong spot. Um, everybody just went ahead and build it. Um, the city inspectors came by. Um, they made them cut the building from roof down to put the setback. That is really expensive on a new house to do that. Okay. So you want to make sure you're really careful. The precision is kind of important here. There are some things you can do now legally to avoid that if a mistake happens, but you have to get the approval of all your neighbors. and um, Sometimes that's harder to do than you think. Some neighbors are pretty, um, uh, they're, they're your neighbors, what are you gonna do? You know your neighbors as well as I do. There's some pretty stubborn people in the world. We shall just get along. <laughs> it's still 1984. All right, now, um, on this house, the garage is here in the front, and I'm ready to put that garage in. It's gonna be easier for you to do this here. And this is one of the reasons why, and I'm gonna show you, don't, I don't want you to do it just yet. I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. Um, and then you can see why I suggest we rethink the topography just a little bit. Um, the reason I want you to do the topography then is you need to be familiar with how to change it because you don't do it very often. And if you have the opportunity to take the dirt out of your house twice, you're going to remember it better. Um, and I, I just had to learn that over the years. I, I would we'd do this and, and, well, I don't remember how to get the dirt out of the house. And I'd end up doing 32 more houses. And it was, I, I'm, I'm getting old. Not really. I'm still a puppy. Great Dane puppy, but I'm a puppy. Okay. If I then put a driveway in, a driveway has to be a minimum of 16 feet wide. That's for two cars. That's still pretty tight. And if I were to go in and measure this house, and I don't even know whose house this is, I stole it from one of you guys. This is uh, 22 foot eight, um, that's pretty wide. So if I'm gonna lay this out and be exact, this is one thing I could do. And again, I want you to kind of watch and then I'll go through and do it again. I could take my fancy dancy model line here in the site plan and draw that line down. Now the reason it shows here is your floor plans above you. And so you can see these lines. If you were to do this on your first floor, you would not see these green lines at all. Then I'm gonna take um, a line. I'm just gonna draw another um, model line from the midpoint. And that's gonna come all the way out. Bring it just straight down to your property line. We'll add the curb and gutter, um, hopefully next week. Depend Actually, I need to give you guys some lab time. So. Tuesday is going to be a lab day for you guys to work up, get things caught up. And then Thursday, are you guys always on Tuesday, Thursdays now? Did they reshift the, it seems like we're still on better. Um, then we'll add in curb and gutter 
And by then you should have your second floors and basements kind of where you want them. So I'm just gonna bring that out to that point. I'm then doing offset again. Um, and I'm just laying it out right now. So I have control over it. And I, as I just said, the minimum is, eight, is 16 feet. That's eight feet twice. So I'm gonna copy that there and copy that there. That would be my normal driveway approach, okay? And that's fine. That works really good. Um, but it has been my experience with young drivers that staying on the driveway can be a tricky endeavor for new drivers. So I usually go in and I will do another offset of um, one foot of minimum on each side. So I'll pop that one out and pop that one out so that I have a little bit of extra room there. It also helps to make sure I don't have a concrete steam at my garage doors. I kind of want to avoid that. Um, not knowing how these doors are. The other option you have is you can go out the corner of the building itself, okay? So I want to go through all this to show you have options. If you're going to go in, then you go architecture, floor, and you then go and select your four inch concrete slab. I've got all my lines here. I can take my line tool and I just start tracing where that driveway is going to be. And I'm just gonna do it like that. And then it needs to be on, not on your first floor. That's two feet up in the air. That needs to be on your finished grade. And then you can check that off. Now, again, you guys have the option. You can go from the corner of the building straight out as well. Um, that's perfectly within reason. It just kind of finishes off the house a little bit. Okay. Now, before you guys, so I'm going to go into 3D where the topography is. This is the problem we run into. Okay. This topography is at the same level as this driveway. And what I would have to do is go in here and edit that surface. And now things get really muddied up. Um, you have to add points. And that means I need a point there, a point there. And notice this point just dropped down to the bottom. It's not the same angle. And a point here, and a point here. That one just tied down. This, now this grass is sloping. Um, yay, I'm so glad. Then you have to go through and modify. So I'm going to start with this guy here. And he is at the bottom of my footings. I don't know where he's at. I don't want to take the time to figure it out. I don't really care. So I'm going to give him a negative 12 inches. I better put inches in there pretty quick. Otherwise, it'd be 12 feet. Then this guy here, he's up where he's supposed to be. So I'm just going to drop him down a minus 2 inches. And this guy is going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop him down a minus two inches. Things should be going pretty good now. Back door here, kind of a weird spot. We'll do a minus two inches there as well. And I can't see my driveway at all now. Happy day. Okay, everything just kind of disappears. So what you're looking at and let me see if I can show you a little bit better over here. When you're putting in these points, oops, dang it. Let me just cancel that. Okay, what I'm, people are getting kicked out, that's crazy. Um, let me go ahead and put this topography and I wanna to talk a little bit about what you're doing. When you place these points, one, two, three, four points, and those points are there at whatever elevation you place them. Most likely, they're on the first floor, okay? So knowing that, I can then go in and modify these points. So this point, I'm gonna drop down two feet. And now I've got a line there. That means I bent, there's a slope there now, as it slopes down. If I take this one and I raise it up three feet, now I've got topography lines showing, like you find on a contour map. I take this one, we dropped it down, it's 
So minus six. Now I'm getting more topography forming. And this one I can take and do one first. So it's not creating this topography. When I look at that from the side view, that's what's happening to the property. So you got to know exactly where everything is. If that feels like, oh, and goodness, and you don't want to deal with it, just delete the thing out. And then you can go around your sidewalks and your, your um, driveways. So that would look something like this. So I'm going to take that guy out, maybe. And I'm going to drop back down to my view here. I'm going to take this whole thing out. And it's gone. I'm going to go back to my site plan. And that's my level that I'm at. My topography is going to look something like this. And so I go my topo surface now, and I'm starting on the outside. And I'm going to click a point here and here and down here. And then they come over to the driveway. And you would want to have your sidewalks in first as well. I'm just going to show you what I would recommend. Uh, go up here, get that point, get the corner of the house, go up to the next corner of the house, and I'm going to put all these points in. And it's going to be, um, well, it's a little bit of work. It's not, not a simple endeavor that you're going through here. But each point is going to be really, really important as things to start to finalize out here. Coming up underneath, because we've got to put a patio and our porch on, come across here now, back out to here. And now I've got that set. Let's go back to 3D. So at this point, I am still up way, way high. But now I can move the whole thing down to where it needs to be in my stop elevation. And again, I'd have to get the dirt out of it, but I can just select the whole thing, do my move, go from here, and find where my finish grade is. Up there, and come down to there. And I'm going to do one more move. Once I get it in position, I'm going to go down, and this will go down two inches below that. And now when I go into 3D, my sidewalk's above where it's supposed to be. Okay, so it's a little, and I haven't tied this into the garage yet, but that would be my recommendation. Just take your topography out, figure out where your sidewalks are going to be on your property, where your driveway is going to be, where you want patios and decks. You've got to put all that in. Um, and that, that's the next step to do this is the patio and the deck. Okay, um, you guys feeling brain numb? Because I, I think we'd probably hit a point where we probably should stop and let you get this much done. Uh, some of you still need to work on basements and second floors and whatnots and who cares. Um, so I want to do that. So think about your porches and your decks. Let's just give you an idea what those are. There are three things you have. There is a porch, which has stairs that lead up to it, usually by a door. Okay. If it just stares to the door, you have what's called a stoop, which is a flat place to stand so you don't get on your keister when the door opens up. So porches are almost always elevated. Then you have um, patios. Patios are always at grade level. They're on the ground. So they usually go with paver stones, um, not usually wood. You could have a deck that is kind of quasi-attached to the house, but usually it's built off of the porch. You go on the porch and then you either step down or onto a deck. And decks are never more than 30 inches off the floor, off the ground. That's the definition of a deck. It's, a, it's built 30 inches above the ground or lower. Then the, fourth, the final option is a balcony. Those are always second and third floor options where they overhang and look down. We sometimes in a vernacular will talk about a second floor deck, which is actually a balcony that has stairs that go down to the ground. That's just common vernacular, but you want to know the definitions. It's off the second floor, it's a balcony. 
If it's on the ground, it's a patio. If it's above the ground, but less than 30 inches, it's a true deck. And then you have a porch, which is attached to the house, usually by an entrance door. And so it could have a wraparound if you still have residential. So start thinking about where you want those to be. And we're gonna kick those into high gear uh, next week because we need those before we go on. But you do want to start planning out where sidewalks are. So things are feeling a little, little disjointed, and, and they are, um, but so I'm trying to get y'all something to work on while I'm getting there, okay? All right, lab time for this last, almost an hour, not quite, about 40 minutes, okay? Uh, questions online, this is your time. What level do I put the dirt at? Your dirt should be on, uh, you should have a finished grade level. You still have to have that foundational height. Um, oh, wait, you don't. Let's see. So that nine inches, you haven't created a, a level for that? Uh, apparently not. Okay. So what you're gonna want is, um, this. Um, let me go into the elevation side here of the site plan. And I'm going to take my topography out again so you can see what's going to happen here. Okay, so your floor is here, and then you come down, you come down nine and a half inches, which is your furring. So what you're going to do is you won't have use of the foundation on yours. So you're going to come to first floor level, you're going to right click, you're going to go create similar. And it's gonna fight me a little bit here right now because I'm, um, yeah, it's gonna fight me just a second. Let me get out of this. Because um, I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. One is I got too many lines here. So, I just, yeah, hang on. That's some weird. Sorry, just one second. I got this weird thing happening that I should uh, Okay. Sorry, just that line was fighting a little bit. So when you come in, um, and you can go off the foundation height for this as well, if you would like, because it's really kind of what you're doing. Okay. Okay, so the distance between your first floor and your foundation is one foot three. That is not yours. Yours is um, actually 10 inches. So if we take from the foundation, if you right click on that and go create similar and move up. And let's see. Move up five inches. Like really, if it's five inches, click and drag out, that will be where your finished grade is. Okay. okay. So then just rename it to finished grade. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, all of you who are at home right now, all of the laptops are currently checked out. Uh, as soon as Perns comes back, we should have a couple more, and then we'll have to wait for Taylorsville to bring back some others. So they're gonna be trickling in a little slow. The best thing you can do is to, um, starting on Tuesday, call the office and see if they've been turned back yet. Um, they will never tell me when they've done that. So you'll have to just kind of call them and find out. I'll see if they can give me updates. Um, but yeah, there should be some more laptops by Tuesday while well, schools start coming back from the last round of shutdowns, okay? So sorry, I wish I could have one for everybody all the time. I've ordered more, but they're, they're gonna be a little while to get here because you know everything's kind of hard to get. Does that help, hopefully? Okay, um, any other, those are good questions though. Mm 
Yeah, you can actually, yeah, well, again, yes to that question. Okay, any others? Oh, Rebecca. Elias, do you have any questions today? No, I am good at the moment. Yeah, you guys can still download Revit from Autodesk.com. Um, let me bring up that um, process for you. If you're going to do that, you need to send me an email so that I can send you back an official letter so that you can get the full download so you don't just get the 14 days. Um, so it's going to be autodesk.com. It's going to look exactly like this. You're going to go up to the hamburger in the upper right-hand corner where it says menu. Hamburgers and menus go together very well. Click that down and then don't do the free trial. That's 14 days of, of four choices. Um, that will end up with a $6,000 bill sent to you on day 15. Go to downloads and go to free student software. You click on that. And then at this point, you'll need to create a, an autodesk.com login up here if you don't have one. Or if you do, go ahead and sign in. And then you can just download Revit. Um, you're going to want to download, if you're working the lab here, the lab is on version 21. You don't want to download that version. Now, um, on those that have the laptops, they're on version 20. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to fix that. Um, so it, it could be a little problematic. Um, because I don't have administrative rights and you don't have administrative rights to install software. So we'll figure it out. And I, there's a couple things you can do, okay? And so here is what you can do. Because we are now moving into things like the deck and stuff like that, um, you can... Um, I'm just rethinking. I shouldn't think in front of people. It's painfully embarrassing. Um, you can't, if you don't have the right version, you can't see your software or you can't see your plan. So how do you fix that? Um, Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to come up with another solution. If you've got a laptop that has version 20, I have got to figure out how to get your stuff usable. Um, because ultimately you need access to version 20. So, let's get that. Rebecca, are you there logged in now? Logged into the laptop? Yes. I have not. Okay. I was going to have you check something to see if we could figure out a solution for you. Okay. I can log in Go to quick. plan 72. Plan 42 is not going to work. Okay, um, Rebecca, on yours, I may need some information from you in order to see if I can get this to work. Um, because if I can get it stayed back even to version 18, that would help a great deal. Um, if you could email me 
your username and your password so I can access your file. Then I'll see if I can get it converted for you and see if that's possible. Uh, it's basically I have to export it um, to get it ready. I think. So are you saying that you're going to try and make it version 20 instead of 2021? Yep, that's what I'm going to try and do. Okay. Because you won't be able to install 2021 on that machine. Okay. So. Yeah, so I'm going to have to probably pull it off the computer for you. So if you could also in that email, let me know where it might be stored at so you get the right one. Okay. And so let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, well, would you? And then I'll send you a letter right back if you do that. Oops, oops, oops. So lots of little things to work on. Do you want me to uh, send it to you via email or? Yeah, if you Canvas. would, that way it won't be public in the chat room. It's just a little easier that way to control who has access. And then I will, and if you could also, could you put in a, a phone number I could call you at this afternoon and kind of walk you through the process? Because it looks like it's going to be a little temperamental. So we'll get it. Okay, Will, if you would um, let me know the name that you signed up with in Autodesk. Like, did you use a middle initial? Uh, is your, are you going by your second, your middle name or your first name? I just have to have, the letter has to match your uh, SolidWorks account exact. Sorry, your revenue your Autodesk account, exactly. Whoa, sorry, that was not meant to be. Sorry about that. Then do it again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I'm just, um, yeah, well, if you could just let me know um, what your user, what your, the name you used for your Autodesk account was, the letter has to match that. Thanks. Hasn't got here yet. I'll find it. I'll get it.
Yeah, this will be kind of a, it's going to be a tricky endeavor there, Rebecca. Uh, we may not be successful, but we'll definitely try. Is your email just tpaskett at graniteschools.org? Yes. Yep, that's it. Granite schools or granite school with like? Granite schools. Just William, huh? Cool, William. Just William. Okay, I've got 23 windows opened up on the computer. I'm a little uh, lost. So is it just lab time for the rest of the video call? That is correct. Okay, then could I leave? I need to go mow somebody's lawn. Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay, no, William, it is en route to you right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, Rebecca, that is a challenging thing to remember. I will have to, your, your password's unique. Well done. I would not remember that in a million years. Okay, I'm gonna jump over and log into the computer real quick and try and salvage Rebecca here real quick. So um, if you guys have a question, just uh, turn your mic on and yell. I'm, I'm just gonna be just around the corner. And we'll see if that's for the uh, additional floors in the grade book, if we don't have any additional floors, what do we turn into that? Okay, I need to put your mouth by the mic because I can't hear you. For the additional floors in grade book, if we don't have any additional floors, what do we turn into that? Just um, in the submission box, just type in the text. I only have a main floor, and that's all you need to do. Got it. Because I just, I would love to say I remembered all 64 house plans being done this semester. I don't. So, but yeah, just, just put in the text box that you only have one floor and you don't have that option. Okay. All right. That's all right. I just want to go to the way to the Oh, found one. Cool. Good buddy. Let's see if I just turn the lights on. Oh, he might
They'll be out say, hey, that line is short enough to get in us. Hey, Rebecca, what is the name of your file? So in, sorry, I forgot to mention that part. That's okay. In the two seconds you told me. Um, it's in the architect, in my nine number architectural design, and it's in that folder, and then you click the house folder, and it's just house. Okay, thanks. I can get it. So, did you do a building tag yet? Yes. So, what we're going to do is go. Oh. So, here's your. You go building pad, you can use the walls, and then you just pick these two walls. Yeah, because you don't you don't want pieces. And then this is going to be um, so this is the pad here, and so we're going to do something with that. Like this, yes.
Okay, Rebecca, when this comes, it's probably going to need to come through Google Drive. But I'm going to send you some pretty detailed instructions. It's um, you have to convert the file. So just keep it on your email, and I'll give that to you in the next 20 minutes.
Okay, Rebecca, I'm going to send this to you. Um, it is what's called an IFC file, which is an interchange file, which basically breaks it down. I don't know what this is going to look like when you get it but it will have enough information there to know where you're at. So let's say you're just starting your second floor, for example. Your main floor may not look the same, but you can build your second floor, and then we can import that back in. So we'll just see how it, how it goes here, okay? Um, so I'm gonna attach that. And so it will be a different looking file. Um, don't let that throw you off too much. And I will uh, definitely give you some. Okay, let's see how that is. Okay. Um, So I'm having a little problem with the file size. Okay, so when these come, you'll have to download them. It's gonna be from an Adobe Cloud. So hopefully everything works good there. And may send instructions to you as well. Oh, that's not um, okay. I'm going to include also a Google Drive link for you to download this, Rebecca, just because of the sheer size of it all, which is good. <laughs> Learning a lot. Yay.
you know how to download out of Google, right? Rebecca? I actually don't think I do, no. Okay, and so there'll be a link there. You just click on it. It'll open up the Google Drive. Then you can download it to your laptop. Okay. So I'm sending these instructions to you now. Um, Okay. Okay, don't forget you do have a few things due tomorrow in Canvas. Um, so make sure you check that. Um, they're due by five. Um, so don't miss out on those. That thing. And um, things should be good, hopefully, all things considered. Um, there'll probably be a few more online assignments in Canvas next week in that there's still a few of you will be here on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So just to kind of slow down the drawing part to get a chance to catch up. Okay, did you get that email, Rebecca? That might take a while to get to you. I got it. Okay. All righty. So and you have my um, phone. If I'm not this, and I put this in the messages here on uh, Zoom. But if you guys need to call me again, uh, my phone number here at my desk is 385-646-1737. It's there. There to everybody. Sorry, Sharon, I sent that to you by yourself. So there's my phone number in the chat if you need to copy that out. Um, if you guys need anything, I am here all day tomorrow. Um, so, yay me. By the way, this floor is very, very creepy on Fridays. It's super quiet here. Very, very quiet. But you're getting a house plan done, so that's important. Dr. Paskett? Yes. So I didn't realize I had this question until after I left the GTI. Uh -oh. Do you know if, like, if our school shuts down, are we still able to go to the GTI if we, if no one contacted us about us coming in contact with someone okay. or if you're on work? school dismissal then no if you were doing distance learning and the sh shutdown happened then that's yes so okay. while you're on school dismissal if you're going to classes there in person then you have to stay away okay yeah just because they're there while you guys in that two week shutdown they're doing a lot of contact tracing and they don't want to have things spread more while they're in the process of doing that yeah. But when you see the numbers on the website, those are actually two weeks old because they're doing all that contact tracing. And so they don't want to get to be a bigger issue than what it is. That Sorry, I wish sense. you could. I really do. It'd be so much easier. I'm going to do this.
So I'm going to see if I can still do something. Okay, make sure you have things saved. If you are from Skyline, make sure you take a backup with you today. Um, you won't be back until the 19th. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 